Good morning. Welcome, one and all. We say good morning. Perhaps you're listening to the show at some other time, but when we do record live on Facebook, it is good morning. We also welcome those on BizTalk Radio. Once again, broadcasting from the iHeart Media and Entertainment Studios, gorgeous San Diego, Southern California. Hope you had a good week. Here we are, Easter weekend. Happy Easter to one and all. Welcome to Garden America, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. And now with today's weather, here's John Bagnasco. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little bit of spring weather. Yeah, we do, don't we? Yeah, and you know what? The, all the rain, uh, I wrote an article in the newsletter, but all the rain is made for just spectacular wildflower blooms here in California. Read the article in the newsletter this week and get an idea of the picture. You paint us a picture, John. If you're in Southern paint. California, if you're in Southern California, it's worth the drive to Diamond Lake and Hemet. You're talking mountains and mountains of wildflowers, you know, not just a patch. Yeah, different ones. Yeah, like if you come to my house, Tiger, you can see the little hillside. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're talking mountains. And you know what What made the, the I went with my wife. I'm not good at doing last-minute things. I mean, I need to plan days or weeks <laughs> ahead of time. You're not going to jump on a plane to Europe yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, so she, she gets up in the morning and goes, hey, you want to, we're going to go. The, and I go, now? <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait a minute. So no let, warning? Well, all right, let me put my shoes but on. But you were happy you went. Oh, yeah, I was so happy. But what was really exciting was having the Picture This app. Oh, yeah. Because I could tell what every – I don't know all the wildflowers. Yeah. California poppies, of course, you know, right? Right. right. But there were a Lupin, lot I didn't know. You know, yeah. different things. But, like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot out there. Yeah, there were Canterbury bells. There were just – it was – it was really breathtaking, which was the word that I used. Um, I think the rain had a lot to do with it, right? Oh, yeah, of course it had Obviously. a lot to do with it. And the day was perfect. But, you know, it was so nice that I, I think the next two weeks are going to be good. So if you're in the area, take a drive out there. The only warning is if you go on the weekend, once you get to the park, it's an hour before you can get in the parking lot. Yeah. So either go really early in the morning if it's on the weekend, or maybe try to go um, during the week. It may not be as bad. But I 100% I guarantee you'll be glad you went. Yeah, and then stay on the trails when you're out there. It's starting to get. Yeah, stay on have the you, trails. Have you had any snakes yet at your house? No, but uh, cold. Jesse it's still pretty was, cold, isn't it? Jesse yeah. was uh, cutting a tree at some or doing some work at somebody's house. And he said that they found a um, king snake. King snake. They found a king snake that was trapped in a net. What? So whoa. So they got it out and released it. Yeah. Okay. King snakes. Yeah, they're harmless. Good. I think king snakes will eat rattlesnakes, won't they? I don't know, but I know king snakes are good in the sense that they're usually not very harmful to people. Right. They're good for the yard, right. though. Yeah. yeah, I can tell you that king cobra king cobras eat pythons. <laughs> yeah, because you know the python problem in Florida, and they also fight GI Joes. Yeah, uh, they trap the pythons and what, and they give them to people who have snakes. You know, large uh, snakes, snakes venomous or otherwise. Yeah, and they eat pythons. Wow, a cobra's not going to eat a python. Do you know how big a python is? <laughs> Absolutely. Would you like me to show you a YouTube video? <laughs> That's like saying that your uh, dog Trust is going to eat an elephant. YouTube. Trust me. <laughs> King cobras eat pythons. There are some dogs. They eat pythons. They cut. They cut the head off and they feed it to them. Oh, oh wow! That's yeah, like, it live? different yeah. than like. Oh no no no! It's different than like a cobra catching a python. I don't know yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah. No, no, that it's no. gonna wrestle. No, they, it. what they do so because they have to kill these pythons because they're an invasive right. species. Right. And then the people who have breed snakes or have snakes or whatever have licenses. Yeah. Then they they give them so at least they're doing something good for the kill of the python. Yeah. And then they eat them. Why don't they feed them to the alligators? Why don't they Maybe feed they, them to they probably do. Yeah. Or people. All right. Probably do. Oh, that one's, that could have gone south real quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a lot of people making uh, a lot of uh, very nice comments already on our Facebook page. Yeah, Tanya right? said that she read the uh, newsletter and watched the video. The video, by the way, there's a link in the newsletter to the video. Yes. Or if you just go to YouTube and put uh, Diamond Lake Wildflower Trail. A lot of people have taken videos just this week in the or the past few weeks, yeah. um, so you can get an idea for uh, whether I'm exaggerating or not. You know, and, and this is one of those years that it's, uh, I think, if you're into flowers, really important year to go out and see this because this is also one of those years that you're going to see 
you know, things that you might not see on a normal year. You know, in the right, sense right, of right. there are years after a wild wildfire, and you're yeah. going to see plants that only come out after the, the re- wildfire. The regeneration. Right. And this is one of those years that the only time you're going to see these plants in abundance is when California gets 20 inches of rain. Yep. yep. You know, and so um, it's just kind of neat because – yeah, we go out and we see California poppies and we see the African daisies and there's loop in every year. <clears throat> but like what John saw up there, I mean, just the diversity of the wildflowers this year is yeah. extreme because of the amount of rain that we got. And not only the rain, but the cool weather. I mean, we're in April right now. Usually by this time, we're already thinking summer. You know, like it's, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. So it's it's just crazy how cool it's been. How what about rainy the flower fields? Has anybody seen they're, those? They're they're blooming. Okay. I know that. Yeah, I haven't I haven't actually been there yet, but I know that they're open. You can see them off blooming. the freeway, and especially after a winter. They're a lot usually of rain. in full bloom in yeah. April. Yeah, yeah. right. By so. usually by Mother's Day, they're at the tail end. Tail end they end might last a little longer this year. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, lots of fun stuff happening. It's good. Hey, yeah, uh, Charlie says uh, new on Facebook. Usually listens on KQMS, but he's watching us live on Facebook. Oh, thank, thank you, Thank you, Charlie. Charlie. And we do encourage those people, those on the BizTalk Radio, of course, keep listening to BizTalk Radio. But if you want to check in with us and interact live, you can go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. Every Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Time Zone, 8 o'clock on the West Coast, you can interact and uh, watch us live, answer questions, talk to other people in the comments section. And uh, there you go, Facebook Live. Speaking of that, Tiger, yeah, how many platforms are we on now? iHeart Media Platform, BizTalk Radio. Oh, let me take off my shoes. Yeah, Pandora, <laughs> Spotify. Your platform shoes? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to be able to count. Oh. Google. Uh, yeah. Alexa. Yeah. Probably 10 different streaming digital platforms that you can find uh, Garden America. Yeah. You can't get you away give from give a them. shout out to our buddy Scott from Pennsylvania? Yeah, Scott from Pennsylvania is in Coronado. Yeah, so he's listening live. So that's good. Thank you, Scott. And happy Easter to uh, Gina and um, Carla, everybody wishing us happy Easter. Right. Carla stating, hopefully we think of more than just chicks and bunnies and eggs during Easter. Well, you Easter. know, I have a <laughs> uh, wildflower quote, quote of the week, but usually on Easter I use the quote from Pope John the Twenty Third, which was, um, let's see. We are the Easter people, and Hallelujah is our song, which I just thought We are was, the Easter people. Yeah, That's good, people. It was a great quote. But what, anyway. Yeah, what is your quote this week? You want me to? Do we have time? Oh, yeah. We've got a couple of minutes to the first break. Okay. Well, because of the wild, I was so inspired by the wildflowers, I found the quote from uh, Lady Bird Johnson. Lady Bird Johnson? Yeah. You're going back a ways. You know where the name Lady Bird came from, by the way? Probably read it, but don't remember. One of her nurses when she was little said, she's as cute as a ladybird. Really? As a little ladybird, something like that. I remember driving past their estate as a kid in Texas. Really? Yeah. Well, anyway, she said, uh, some may wonder why I chose wildflowers when there's hunger and unemployment and the big bomb in the world. Well, I, for one, think we will survive, and I hope that along the way we can keep alive our experience with the flowering earth, for the bounty of nature is also one of the deep needs of man. I thought that was a nice quote. That's one of your better quotes. Not yours. <laughs> was Lady Bird Johnson. One that you've read. Maybe we should have more quotes from her. But yeah, How about her husband? <laughs> nah. I don't think we can use his quotes on air. <laughs> yeah. Very good, John. Anybody that knows old Lyndon, yeah, uh, yeah he didn't have the. Uh, well, let's put it this way: his uh, his vocabulary could be challenging at times in front of kids. <laughs> he would. Um, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, in the bathroom. Yeah, he would. He would conduct interviews and take reporters' questions sitting on the toilet with in the, the door open and, and talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a wild one. Character. Yeah, yeah. Character, character. Thank you. He used to pick his dogs up by the ears. Remember that? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, she was she was very famous for what she did for wildflowers, mm-hmm. uh, and started really a whole movement of of uh, I think native plants and well, wildflowers. So did her husband, as we just discussed. <laughs> yeah, think, we were just talking a, about that. I think there's a poppy named after her. There's a ladybird rose, right, John? 
There's a lady, uh, let's see, there's Lady Bird Johnson, and then I think there's Lady Bird. There's two. Uh, Lady Bird is the one I think Keith Zeri did. Okay. And that's <clears throat> relatively easy to find, and Lady Bird Johnson's very difficult to find. So we're going to take a break right now. First break of the uh, the morning here, if you're watching us live, uh, a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio so we can support our many fine sponsors and those who do support Biz Talk Radio across the country. Those on Facebook Live, it's going to be a quicker break, so uh, chime in. No guest today. That's something special when we come something back. Something special when we come back, yeah. and no guest today. It's just us. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. Thank you for tuning in. This is Garden America. We have returned from that break, a little shorter on Facebook Live, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio. Thank you to all the fine folks, Stephanie and Ryan, the ones that, uh, the two that uh, keep us honest and keep us on the air every week nationally, BizTalk Radio. Thank you. Those on Facebook, uh, thank you for uh, interacting every week. And uh, that said, let's uh, toss it, as they say in the business, to John. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say at the beginning of the show, we did not announce that this is the birthday edition oh, yeah. of the Garden America radio show. <laughs> Keeping that under wraps, yeah. this is a special birthday edition. Now, it, now we're, it's, it's a famous person who I've never met, you've never met. They live back east. Oh, no, not no. that birthday? Oh. No, 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 no. This is Tiger's birthday. Oh, Tiger's birthday. Yeah. 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 You thought you could slip by, didn't you? <laughs> I was just going to, you know, it was... It was... Just going to be like, all right, let's just. So, those have on a show. Facebook Live, see if you can see him blush. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to guess yeah. your age. All right. 42. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. See, okay. I thought 41. How about yeah. that? He looks 42. younger. I've been, keeping, yeah. <laughs> I've been keeping track of him. Yeah. Yeah. 42 years. Got you a years. present, Tiger. What? Yeah, that what's plant. Even, you can take yeah, it I was going to say, what's he taking out of this tree? Really? Yeah, it's from oh my Brian goodness. and I. Goodness. Should I open this now or no? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, right. all right. All right. It makes Whoa. for good TV. All right. I'm worried. We, we knew it was something that if you can't use it now, eventually oh, you can use it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Look at it. Nice. Noop. And look how nice those look. Yeah, I know. They're so nice and so clean. You know what? Don't open it. Yeah. Just hang just, it. Just leave them. <laughs> yeah. These are the perfect pruners. These are the pruners we always talk about, huh? You know what? It, they're, those people that garden, I mean, other people would think, you get excited about pruners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It makes your job so much easier. Now, we do have a few listeners in Canada, so uh, Tiger's holding up a pair of secateurs. Yeah, secateurs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very, very nice. All clean. No rust on them at all. No rust. Look at these. Thank you, guys. Now, I, there's a lot of great pruners out there, but those are just my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, and they're and – they're, you know, the nice thing about these pruners, too, is just the simplicity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that's the thing, right? When you have pruners and they're complex – well, that's you what leave I them think out about and they, Falcos. And you know? they rust. And... I know people like them because you yeah. can take them apart. And But those are the guys that work on engines. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just let them rust and then go buy a new pair. I actually yeah. did some yard work yesterday. Did you? And I think I watered for the first time since the rain. Well, I watered yesterday also. Uh huh. Easy. Look how excited you know, again. I am. Dropping everything. <laughs> now, wait, whoa, whoa. Did you? There's money in there. Oh, is there? Didn't you put money in there, John? No. Oh. John took uh, that. I <laughs> the money you had put in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Right. That I, thought, I thought there was a Benjamin in there somewhere. <laughs> well, John was very guys. nice to remind me of your birthday. Oh, nice. So I'm going to give props to John. Yeah. Yeah. John's always good about. I thought you were morning. August for some well, reason. If we have to give props, we will give props to your mom. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she sent me an email. <laughs> oh. Really? My mom. My mom's of, always good about that. Clean. Yeah. 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 Oh, and there's some, something else I need to admit to you. Yeah. Off air. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fun. But, yeah, no, e Easter weekends, because every once in a while my birthday falls, falls on, on Easter. like an Easter. You're like me every always... now and then. I'm on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. that's Yeah. See, so. So so you're, you're a day before busy. Easter. Yeah. Yeah. Easter baby, huh? <laughs> exactly. So what year were you born? 81. Wow. 81, I was working at Kixie. <laughs> Local radio station here. KYXY. Uh, 81, I was... Graduating from college. <laughs> <I think. laughs> 
Oh, eight, it would have been about right. Yeah, 81. Yeah. 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 Cuz I went to college in uh Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't graduating from college. You got you graduated way before 81, right? Yeah. Actually, it was a year before I started working for your dad. Yeah, <laughs> it was, was it? 80, was it? 82 is when I started. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies, right? Having yes, fun? and it gets faster and yeah. faster. 72 yeah. was when I graduated from college, <laughs> 10 years earlier. I was in high school in 72. <laughs> Right here in San Diego. Okay, we should remind our listeners, if we haven't told them already, no guests today. Yeah, It's going to be us. And what is our topic today? Something to do with spring? Spring. Spring is here. I, I don't know. I kind of feel spring is here in Southern California. Well, you know, Definitely. our topic was going to be native plants, yep. or native suns, which yep. is a nursery that grows native plants and, and drought-tolerant plants, too. Yeah. And, I, you know... There's some things like when you go to um, Annie's Annuals Mm -hmm. and you're walking through looking at their benches and things, there's all kinds of neat little four-inch pots. Right. And you want to try this and try that. I feel the same thing about Native Sons. Yep. Um, They do just a fantastic job. So Of unique plants. Yeah. We can cover some of those for sure because, um, you know, Native Sons is definitely one of those companies that has unique varieties of plants. Right. Now, they're wholesale only, right? right? So you've got to go to garden centers to buy that, their plants. But you can reach out to them, and they'll tell you which garden centers in your area stock their plants. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that is the nice thing. And um, I went to school in San Luis Obispo, so I had the uh, opportunity to go to Native Sons a few times and see their facility. And it's it's really neat to see them grow these plants mm-hmm. from seed or from from cuttings and just kind of be able to kind of just experience the the idea that they're kind of taking these really unique and rare plants and putting them into garden centers for people to be able to have at their home. One of the other things too that I think John would appreciate is they also do a lot of those dwarf conifers and kind of more um cypress cedar plants and i don't know john's kind of interested in that as well so you know you know those are fun things to see come out of the nursery right yeah yeah so yeah i mean um sometimes facebook has misspellings when you're trying to type something in and i'm not sure what gina's trying to say but she says happy birthday tiger thank you for spender <laughs> I think she means spending. Spending. <laughs> no part of it with us. <laughs> <laughs> so did You're she, welcome. Did she, <laughs> she means spending a part of it with us? No. Oh. I don't know what no spender for spender. Well, she'll clear no it part. up, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of good uh, birthday wishes to you, Tiger, from our Facebook viewers and listeners. Yeah. Rochelle wishes you a grand day. Lenore. Millie from Millie. Napomo. Carla Carla from Huntington Beach. Uh, Next Sunday is going to be the spring auction for the California Rose Society. We are off next week. And we are off, right. Yes. Uh, And I was going to say, if you are listening to today's show, you can go online to ccrsauction.com and... uh, and place bids, and we ship all over the country. You cannot. Um, Pull that mic closer to you, or you can get closer to it. How about that? That's good. That that mic <laughs> is your friend. <laughs> if you um, if you can join us, though, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can find the address at ccrsauction.com. It'll be fun. There'll be um, there'll be treats, something for you to eat. Uh, but you'll learn a lot about roses, and there'll be a lot of nice people. And one rose I wanted to mention because it just got added is a found rose that was found in San Leandro up in the Bay Area. Right. And it's <laughs> the name is very creative. It's San Leandro Dark Red Hybrid Tea. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking talk about the. Uh... Getting specific with the name yeah, of a rose, but it's right? a, a velvety black rose. Ooh, ooh. It's extremely fragrant. I mean, really? as fragrant as anything you could imagine. So, and that's in the silent auction. And I have a feeling that that's not going to go for a lot of money. Of course, maybe now that I'm talking about it, we got to take a break. I All do right. want to read uh, Gina quickly before the break. Okay. Sorry, I'm making pancakes and typing. Thank you to Tiger for spending part of his birthday with us. <laughs> and with that, we're going to take a break Ooh, for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Go. 
Garden America is back from that break. Uh, Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Thank you for the nice uh, birthday wishes for Tiger. Thank you, Gina, for clearing that up. <laughs> we are back talking about spring. Want to continue, John, with that rose, the, the velvet rose before my voice cracks all together? The San Leandro <laughs> Oh, I thought rose. it was finished. Okay, I want to make sure. San Nothing. Leandro dark red hybrid tea. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> again, if you um, are not going to be able to attend the auction, you can put a bid online for it. This is not but to be confused I with try. our auction in November, October. This is obviously yeah, spring. You know, how they talked we, me into doing two we, auctions this year, I have no idea. Auction. I know. <laughs> and I'm doing three auctions within a month, which is <laughs> wow. It's just way too much for an old man. <laughs> it's not going to do well, that all the time in the world. It's a good thing you're doing it then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, John Clement says, "Happy birthday, Tiger." Ah, oh, thanks, John. Way to go, John. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Uh, Kevin says that uh, Kevin lives in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yes. And he said that a lot of the nurseries around there get their plants from Monrovia. Oh, yeah. When I was working for Frank's Nursery back in 19, the 1960s. 19 aught something. Yeah. In the 1960s, they would get in uh, 10 semis a year from Monrovia. from Monrovia. And actually, one time. They all came uh, the first week in June, 10 semis. At once? Yep. And that I was, thought you said 10 like spread out over the no, year. No, no. Wow. Really? And, oh, that I mean, was, and that was way back then. Their year, their seasons only, what? Yeah, they have to, yeah. Three months? Right, but their their biggest month of the year is um, May. Right. And they never brought anything for May because they used locally grown plants. Okay. But- Everybody was done with the season in June, so they would bring in, actually it was the end of June, going in in July, they would bring in container merchandise because no one back there sold container merchandise. Everything was ball and burlap. burlap. Yeah. So it was interesting. And the number one item they sold was uh, golden vicary privet. Really? Yeah. That yellow privet? Yeah. Oh, that's you so don't even funny. see that out no, here. No, not anymore. But, you know, in I definitely feel... That was something that it, you you put in a landscape for contrast because it gave you that yellow gold right. color, but I I think the reason why it's not so popular here is because yeah. it turns into a paley looks sick kind of a plant where sure, where it's truce. cooler, I think it stays more of a, a crisp. Gold. Well, it's also deciduous. The privet, yeah, really, yeah. Oh, I would. So, I'm thinking about a different one then, but you know what I mean. I think. A lot of variegated plants here in the heat, right? Looks look ill. Not yeah. a lot. Of, <laughs> they, they not look, a lot of staying power. Yeah, well, they look bleached. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, but 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 where you get cooler weather, it's kind of neat to have that mm -hmm. real bright, vibrant gold color. But yeah, um, Monrovia is a, a big grower, and yeah, they grow a lot for um, branded plants. You know. So there, you'll see a lot of branded plants come from them. Well, they also have a huge um, – Monrovia, California is where they started, right? Mm -hmm. But they also have a huge growing grounds in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine a lot of the plants that Kevin sees in Coeur d'Alene just come, come from, from Oregon, which is really not that far away. No. Yeah. A lot of a – lot of, they, they used to do a lot of topiaries, a lot of spirals, things like that, too, which is kind of hard to find now. Speaking of that, here in San Diego, what is popping right now at your nursery? So vegetables are the number one thing. So everybody's right. starting to plant all, tomatoes? Their, all their vegetables, tomatoes. And, hey, John, you know, I was up at the, your house this week, and we were talking about the front yard. You weren't there, I, John, but he was up yeah. at your house. <laughs> no, I was there. I know. But, you know, I was thinking about one plant, <clears throat> and um, I don't know – if you would like it or not, but something I felt that would do well up there is the is verbena. You know it it it's what kind very of verbena. I don't know, but I just know I just was thinking because you know we were talking about that slope and we're something that would could plant on there with color and we we're like okay we're gonna do star jasmine because it's hardy and that'll be fine like but a Shannon, ground cover yeah, yeah but Shannon wanted color like she wanted more color too and I'm trying to think of what is a hardy plant that can grow on a slope 
but also give take a little abuse. Yeah, some color. See, I and, don't think of Verbena as being hardy. Really, I think of it as being temperamental. Okay, and, and right. based on based on what? Just the way you have to treat Some it. Some fifty years of gardening, gardening. experience. <laughs> yeah, but but the, but dissecting that plant as far as temperamental. Well, star jasmine is a tough plant. Yes. Um, I I don't know. I just don't picture verbena being Bean. that. I I don't see. Yeah. You know what verbena? When I think of verbena, I almost think of uh, what's the trailing lantana. Yeah. I like think, what is it or what do you mean? No, I mean that's what yeah, I that's think what you of. Think of yeah, it's but, kind of straggly. Okay, you know what though? I'm Got kind it. of like Shannon. I do like a lot of color, so yeah. I, I guess the layperson might say, "I just want a lot of color there." What do you suggest? Right. But like you said, it's got to be hardy. Yeah, you can't just put pansies up there. No, this area, this area well, is very see rocky. Why, right, and I don't see why you can't mix things in with the star jasmine. Right. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like we, we knew star jasmine was going to be our base yeah. plant because it was going to grow. And he's got, these, he's got this slope that's basic rock. And so we need a plant that can more or less trail over the rock and not grow in the rock. Do you live in a fire think, hazard? Think of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> you Try fire planting hazard? on Mount Rushmore. We do. We live in an area where it was very difficult to get insurance to build the house. Because my next because question is, do you have area. anything planted as a fire break? His, he's got no. really good management around yeah. his house. Okay. He has good brush management. Right. I think it'd be difficult you don't for need to your plant house. Ice plant, anything like that around your No. Okay. No. He he's got it he's got it graded well and there's distance between the the, the wildland my, area and his home right. and my tree pit could burn. Yeah. But that would but that's be far about away from it. your house. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. A couple acres away. And now he's got sprinklers that he can just throw on, and they'll just wet down the whole area. So. Look at all these people that are chiming in on what to plant, John. Oh, yeah? What uh, are some options? Carla, Veronica. All right. Well, first of all, Millie said that she went uh, – Millie from Napomo Tiger said she went to Native Sons Nursery last Saturday. Oh, cool. She said they were open to the public during their annual greenhouse open event. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Did you see anything there that stood out in your mind there that you were like, ooh, that's a fun plant? Because that is that is the one thing that Native Sons their facilities they they plant up pretty nicely too, you know they have a lot of like oh, sample gardens really yeah, um, so because it's hard because as you mentioned it's kind of like Annie's annuals you walk in there and they're just flats of four inch plants that are itty bitty right. starts and like, I don't know no, what but that Annie's is. Annie's have you been to Annie's yeah they have planting beds everywhere it's landscaped they have that, it looks spectacular exactly yeah. but that so and that's what ideas. I'm saying like. When you see their plants, you're like, I don't know what this is. And without the signs what, that Annie What's this going to be, this little thing here, right? Yeah. You would never buy any of their plants without their signage. Their signage is amazing. I always talk about that. But then, you know, their display gardens are really fun and cool. I was thinking the other day after you left that uh, as you come up the driveway on the right, that one long area that we're not going to worry about right now. Uh-huh. I was thinking, you know what? I think I'll put a long border there. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, cuz you were saying how you liked the uh at my old house. Yeah. Along the driveway. So, I think I might do that. Yeah. I we were we were talking, Brian, and do you remember John's old house? When you drove up to his house, it looked very well put together, but every plant was different. And I really liked that at John's old house because He'd out of all these really unique perennials mixed in with some roses, just different plants. Right. But it looked very well put together, and I thought that was cool. And we were talking about one of the areas in his yard, and I was like, I think that you should just do that. Because like, they were trying to, like, plan landscaping in it and stuff. And I was like, no, that seems like a perfect area right. just keep, for you to go to, the, go to the garden center, see what you like, find something unique, and then you just plant them, you know, sporadically throughout it. So. I had lots of uh classes of plants like i i might have uh 50 different day looks, yes right but each one would be different. different right yeah exactly um you should oh by the way millie said that uh, she went with the intention to buy one plant <laughs> <laughs> don't we all yeah but she has no self-control nice. so she came back with a lot more good job millie um we got about a minute before the next uh Break, John, if you wanted to read some comments. Oh, I was going to real quick say Native Sons also. I really like their Agapanthus selection. You know, I think John and I 
we've been talking about agapanthus ever since we went to England, and they had such unique varieties, but they're kind of sometimes hard to find here. Right. And Native Sons is one of those companies that produces a lot of different agapanthus too. Do you know who's uh, uh, breeding agapanthus and it's got some great varieties coming up? Wasn't it? Um, yes, our buddy, Ping? our buddy Ping. Ping, right? Ping Lim. Ping Lim. Yeah. yeah, who's one of the? Tell him, tell him to get me some neat ones. Well, he gave we, me we gotta one. We've got to take a break. Hold on. Ping right. called. Ping I'll tell you what it's called when I come back. Okay, All if right. we can remember. It is break time for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, keep the questions, comments coming. We do appreciate it as we spend uh, some quality time together on this Easter weekend 2023 with Garden America. We are back, those on BizTalk Radio. This is the final segment of uh, what you know of as uh, Hour One. Yeah. Hour One, final segment. We're back at six minutes after. Top of the hour news coming your way. But in the meantime, we are back at it here on Garden America as we continue with uh, story time. John Bignasco. I was going to tell you, the the new Agapanthus from Ping is one called Atomic Bloom. Mm. Does he name those? I don't know if he does. Probably the marketing team. Because I, I know that I know that he names his roses, and the marketing team changes the no. name to says something no. else. Be, because <laughs> a lot of his names are pretty good, and that's why I'm thinking: is that him or his, his marketing team? Hmm. Okay. I don't know. He has one one rose that's uh, really difficult to get, just called Chi. C H I. C H I Chi. Yeah. Right. I used to play hockey with a guy named Mike Chi, but that was C-H-E-E. Are you sure it wasn't Mikey? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Likey. Mike Chi. Um, Mike Chi. Yeah, you, next time you talk to Ping, let him know that I'll be a, a trial garden for his new Agapanthus that he wants to see. Look, how, right. look in the last couple of years how much Tiger's gotten into roses. I, <laughs> I mean, well, really? No, that's but like a pantheist yeah. he's talking no, about. No, but I'm just saying, speaking yeah. of ping, right? And, and then, it made oh yeah, you think, I, now th- I have roses. Yeah. and I used to not. You know, but, I, um, if Tiger really wants to get into roses, <laughs> uh, by I would say by the time you're 42 today, uh, by the time you're 62, so like 20 years, 20 years, you would be one of the top rose experts in the world. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. that's about how long. That's about when I started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only because I, actually I a little bit later. This Only is, because somebody asked I'm John. Not saying that I'm one of the top experts in the world. No, but you know the story. How somebody asked John. So you have was, roses, don't you? Yeah. No. Oh. No, that was that was uh, Chris Greenwood. Chris, Chris Greenwood, because I, I think Centers. somebody that was what talking about roses or sells roses. No, no, I was the buyer. He was the, the, the buyer. Armstrong buyer. buyer for roses, and, had, and I had no roses in my yard. Yeah. Wow. That's like working for C's candies and never tasting anything that they have to right. sell. Right. I think roses are when I when I remember back, roses are your fourth like let's say addiction, right? House plants. No, house started with started house, with house plants, plants. And then within house plants it was uh Gisneriads for a while. Yeah. And then bromeliads. Okay. And um was there another type? Philodendrons. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm into yeah. philodendrons now. Split leaf. We talked about that. You need the variegated ones. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Great houseplant, right? Then <laughs> then I got into um, euphorbias and sansevieria. Euphorbias is a really neat class because yeah. there's – you. I mean, poinsettia is a euphorbia. And so right. they're just very diverse and different. And It you gives can, you a euphoric feeling. Yeah. Just eat it. See what happens. Well, I have all ten volumes of the Euphorbia Journal. <laughs> they're, they're like well, boy, it's read like me a, a story, John. Before yeah, I go yeah, to bed. yeah. It's <laughs> like a Euphorbia encyclopedia. You know what's that's funny? What, that's what um, anesthesiologists read their patients before right. they <laughs> <laughs> operate, get them to go to sleep. But 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 um, speaking of like philodendrons, big in the fifties, sixties, you watch old reruns of TV shows. Perry Mason comes to mind in his office. They're probably fake, I guess. Oh, yeah, they but are. But that's all you you would see a lot of those in old TV shows. Even Dick Van Dyke in their living room, you'd see the same thing. Well, when I worked for Frank's Nursery in Michigan, it was called Frank's Nursery and Crafts, and they had a lot of craft, crafty-type materials, and they had a whole artificial flower aisle. 
And back then they were plasticky. Oh, very bad looking. And you can tell a looking. mile away, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. And I and I can't believe how people back then used to buy those. But yeah. <laughs> but that's the all they knew. Cartload. Now even there's even some to this day still. If you go to, like not Michaels, there's another Hobby Lobby in Mira Mesa. They sell everything, including fake plants. But Hobby Lobby's got some that look. I mean, you look at their orchids. Yeah. They look as good as, as a real plant. As good as plant. anything. But then if you go down another aisle, it's like. Oh boy! Oh, that's the discount aisle, that, right? I mean, you can tell they're they're fake, even yeah. even from a distance. But but they do have a lot a lot of them now. That's not too bad. You know what's you know what's good about that one? Here, hold on one second. Well, it's where you pruned it. It it well yeah. I mean I mean. I think the top of it looks pretty bad. So Brian, Brian right now this is. Looks, this looks. I feel like that that's real wood though. There, think, you know. I think you know yeah. Because. So Brian's, we've got this ficus benjamina in our studio here that Brian um, has, and, and it's it's definitely not real. You know what's funny? It looks more real on camera. On though. camera, and that's yeah. that's what it's for. It's it's a prop. Yeah. It's a but prop you, for the show. But you know what's funny is that that tree actually has lost leaves over the years. Yes, <laughs> meaning <laughs> like, meaning like, right there. <laughs> like he has to go and sweep up these leaves, <laughs> and I just want to see you go put them back on with glue. <laughs> hey, Gina says that Proven Winners has some uh, great new lantanas. Yeah, uh, are some I mean, of those what you're thinking of? Not lantanas. No, uh, I'm sorry, I, yeah, verbenas. The verbenas. I feel yeah. I. I, I don't know. You can try some if no, you want. No, but I, I thought you had some at your old house. Because you used to put a lot of like I did in little the front. proven winners and things in the front beds. Right. And they yeah. all died out. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Maybe That's not, what though. made me think Not like that, them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I still like them, but yeah. I don't know if they're as tough as they could be. Okay. I know that they're very snail prone. I don't, I don't mm. like them because they're very snail prone. I've not seen any snails yet this year. I oh have. my I gosh! Have. Come to my house. You can see all you want. Really? You want me to bring you some in, yeah, in exactly. studio? Yeah, next you know. Time? Yeah, bring some decolet snails. Yeah. As oh, long as you're I, gonna... I'm going to have to get some from Tiger yeah. when yeah. the irrigation's all in. There, those are good. Maybe decolet I should snails. do that before I see. I would, right? without exaggeration, without exaggeration, as I've been pulling weeds out and planting roses, I've come across thousands. Wow, thousands of snails. Yeah. And which means see, but John's but John's yard specifically is a very good snail spot. I was meaning, gonna say he has things because snails he has, want. Because he has things in cans, it gives the snails a great area to hide in that's damp, you know, all of also that. Also earwigs and sow bugs. Yes. They love to go in the little holes at the bottom yes. of the can and eat so, all the roots. On so the roses. he's he is a he is very set up for a good snail population. I usually see them though all over the place, but not yeah. yet this year. No, they're they're starting to come out for sure. It's warm enough. It, okay, it, I'll again, wait. it's yeah, been cool. Give me a couple it's of weeks, cool, right? But uh, they'll be out for sure. And with all the rain too, there's right. I'm sure they're going to come out more in force this year. Hey, we got to. We're so close to this uh, next break here for Biz Talk Radio. We're going to uh, step aside here just briefly for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. News coming up top of the hour. Hopefully, you can catch us six minutes after. So uh, keep that in mind. For the rest of us on Facebook Live, we're going to keep on going. So stay with us. News coming up, Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live coming right back here on Garden America. Happy Easter weekend to you. And if you're watching us on uh, Facebook Live, see, that was very quick. Blink of an eye. And here we are, right back again. Those on Biz Talk Radio, this is our number two. Thank you for joining us, talking about spring and uh, the various things that uh, we should be doing, what's popping up in our gardens, what do we need to be doing. It's still cool here in many parts of the country. San Diego and seasonably cool, as Tiger mentioned, early in the show for April. But things can change on a dime. You, you know, it's funny. We were talking about snails before the break. and That's when it went from Mercury Head to Roosevelt, right? Um, that was during the war. That was things changing on a dime. On a dime. Yeah. See how clever he is? Hey, um, you remember the mercury heads? No. Mercury <laughs> head dimes. Was, uh, the mercury was, was, uh, a, was it a, a Greek? Uh, Greek god. Greek god. Yeah, mercury. He's the messenger of the gods. He had, he had wings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it used to be on the dime. Yeah. It's like, like a buffalo nickel. Yeah. 
<laughs> Tiger. Tiger doesn't Tiger, know what a buffalo neck is. T- Tiger's like, I didn't come here to go to class. I came here to talk about gardening. Uh, Tiger like, probably never had Indian head pennies. <laughs> nope. Oh. Anyway, uh, um, Veronica says creeping timer mock strawberry. I think that area is too large for yeah. those. Those plants would be too small, right? Yep. For yeah. that area. But Lila says, what about Cape Plumbago? Mm-hmm. That might be too big. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it can get too big, right? But it would be color. It would be hardy. Very hardy, too. Yeah. So... I don't um, know. There it are, might not be bad to there, stick one plant up there. There are some new varieties, too, that are more compact, though. Really? So there could be some opportunity. John, there. you're a try-it kind of a guy, like yeah. you just said. Put one in there and see what happens. Um, real quick, before yeah, I, before I, I lose my track You can always dig it out and put in this. something else. Yeah, you're 42. Um, you're going to lose your train of thought a lot. Exactly. <laughs> so we were talking snails and slugs before the break, and um, I was giving a talk to my crews about using um, the um, – Fertilone product, slug and snails. It's the right. comparable product to Sluggo. Great sponsor of our program, by the way, exactly. Fertilone. Exactly. So really great to use slugs and snails, earwig. Slug sulfate. Um, is that what the active ingredient in Sluggo is? Right. Yeah, same thing. So really safe to use around cats and dogs and kids and all that. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard because in one pound container, they were saying that one pound can cover 2,000 square feet. So when you're thinking about spreading a product around in the the spread rate of one pound is 2,000 square feet, you, it's almost like you barely have to use any when you're right. when you're working around your plants. So you end up using way too much in an area, and not that it's bad because it doesn't. It's not you use harm. more than you need to because yeah. it doesn't appear like you're using enough. You you want to spread this right, stuff right right. So because you're looking at it, and you're like, oh, a, a snail needs to cross this in order for it to be effective, right? So you're spreading it wherever you think a snail is going to go. They're going to find it. But you're way you're, you're using way too much. Um but I was just going to go back to that that you know, if people are having slug and snail problems, the Fertilome slug and snail bait is great. Um there's also have they do also have one that has spinosad in it for like those other bugs like earwig, Chewing sow insects. bugs, things like that. Right. So, um but um right. You you don't right. you don't need a lot of it. It's, but it is a difficult thing to spread because you end up spreading a lot more than you need. <laughs> you know, it's easy to spread, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Manure. <laughs> hey, um, Gina says just make it easy and put ivy geraniums. Oh, yeah. They're, Talk about snel- slug of snails. <laughs> right. But, you know, the newer ivy geraniums that are more compact mm-hmm. uh, might not be bad for some spot color. Yeah. What Shannon likes are... The um, African daisies and yeah. talk about slugs and snails. Slugs and snails, yeah. Oh. Exactly. Tanya says that ever since her lizard po- lizard population grew, they have less snails. She oh, wonders cool. if they eat the We've eggs. got a lot of lizards. I have lots of lizards, but also lots of snails. More so, snails than lizards, it's, probably. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. It's a I numbers think, game. I think you got a lot of everything up there, and it's just creating Could be. balance. Yeah. I hope that they eat earwigs and sow bugs, because... There's plenty of those. Yeah. Uh, Jan says, uh, get a couple chickens to eat the snails. My chickens will not eat the snails. They'll really? eat earwigs, sow bugs. They love those, but they I can't the get snails, them to huh? eat the snails. Interesting. So mix it up with a good sauce. Yeah. Not garlic sauce? Right. Garlic. Oh, garlic. Anything with garlic. Garlic butter? Yep. Yeah. You know the first time I had snails? Because I was a little like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Loved them. Just garlic it's, and butter. You know, yeah, I mean, exactly. that's all you taste. Give me some garlic and butter. <laughs> Anything tastes good, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, put a piece of wood down and put some garlic and butter on it, and you'll eat it. <laughs> Lisa, says, Lisa says the hillside uh, might be able to use Vinca Minor. You could do that. I don't know if you want to do that, but you could. Yeah. That would... Uh, the that... hard part with that in your area is that in the summer months, it almost shrinks and then in the cooler months, it will grow very quickly. So, I'm trying to think. That um, would definitely drape over the rocks. Oh, yeah. And there's a variegated one, too. Could you be. Know, you look like you got to look at the variegated face one's like going to look sick. I don't like <laughs> it's the gonna variegated look sick. one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the variegated gonna... one is perfect for pots, cascading in a shady area of your yard. <laughs> Shady, the yeah, key word. Exactly. In Michigan, they would always make uh, 
Do you know the plastic uh, white Grecian urns that oh, yeah, kind yeah. of sit on yeah. the ground? Mm -hmm. Every spring, people would plant those with uh, red geranium. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, did they have bacopa at the time? Or? Asparagus. Asparagus uh, ferns? Asparagus plumosa and springeri. Both of them? <laughs> yep. And uh, one variegated vinca. <laughs> oh, and then also uh, they called them spikes, but they were the dracaena. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 and and at the end of and then at the end of the season, all that was left was the asparagus fern. No, at the end of the season, it all froze. So they <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Like after after one year of asparagus fern being grown with anything else, the only thing you get left with is asparagus. Well, it's not fern. really a year. You only have June, July, <laughs> August, September, and it freezes. That's oh, four months. Yeah, they, got, they I think we're nice. up to Carol now. John, is she next? Um. Millie, Millie was telling Tiger that she bought a uh, gallon Euphorbia Blackbird at Native Sons. Ooh. Do you cool. know that one? No. It's probably one of the perennial Euphorbias, yeah. right? Yeah. And and again, Euphorbia with his crazy class, I don't I don't know which um you know, secondary Latin name of that mar, mar, it's Euphorbia Martini or Martini or something like that, right? Is um, it's they're they're different. They they look different than the other ones. They're they're more kind of like shrubby, succulent. There's kind perennial of, types, right? Yeah, not the succulents. Yeah, that you're thinking of. And um, that's a really neat group of euphorbias because they have these flower heads on them that are kind of like balls, but really green flowers. Then you know, blackbirds sometimes they'll have like a burgundy color to them. What a great name for a, an actress in the '40s, Euphorbia Martini. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. what I would do. I would find names like that. Yeah, Euphorbia Martini. Yeah, they're so that's a cool group. They, you know, what they do really well in a yard um, is add that element of different foliage. So, you know, when you're when you're working in a yard and you got shrubs with leaves, and then you got grasses, and you know, you have these different flowers that has a strappy kind of leaf on it and then it's different looking than normal plants so it's neat to incorporate into the landscape because it's different than the other plants that you usually have in there so mm -hmm. when you're trying to add texture like different layers of textures yes okay. exactly yeah that's a good one john, which, you're up which, next. which is funny john because i'm i'm working with this client right now and they only have uh agave attenuata and aeoniums in their yard uh -huh. And I'm like, I don't like this. I'm talking to them, and I'm like, I got to add something else to this yard because it's not working right, right, for, right. for for the look. And my initial thought was to go with the Euphorbia sticks on fire because I'm like, ah, but I think they're gonna hate that because they're very they're they're people that want something different. Um, and then you see those all over town. Why do they have a coffee? My point exactly. Right. Yes. Uh, but um, I, I think I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna yeah. get some Euphorbia and see if I can suggest those ones to them because I think that that'll work in that area. Who was that that gave us that plant name right now? Oh, Millie. Millie. Thank you, Millie, Palma. because you just helped me pick out a plant for a customer. Carol says, uh, happy birthday, Tiger. Here's Thanks. a question for you. Here in sunny, hot Tucson, her granddaughter lives in a beautiful, rented old house, and she has a raised garden with nothing in it. Also has no water and no shade. <laughs> it's about wow. 20 feet by 30 feet. Oh. What are your suggestions, <laughs> and what could we plant? Agave attenuata? <laughs> Say, well, saguaros. Yeah, saguaros. I mean, you've got to oh. get water, right? Yeah, you have we to. We have to take a break. Is that the, any right. more to the question? There's more to the question, but why don't we take the break, and Let's we'll come back and yeah. get okay, into so it. Okay, do stay with us, those on Biz Talk Radio, those on Facebook Live. I'm Brian Maine, your garden buddies, uh, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox, taking a break. Back after these messages on Garden America. Ah, uh, yes, we have returned from the break. Hope it was a nice break for you. We are back in studio. Tiger's here. I'm here. John's here. And we're going to continue and answer that uh, question from, is it Carolyn Tucson? Carol, right. Carol, okay. So, um, she says that um, they're, uh, she says not seeds. Um, they're thinking of some cactus, and they have seeds for when the monsoon comes. 
and uh, now's the time they would like to see something sturdy. Mm-hmm. So it, she said it doesn't have to be blooming. No, I mean, I mean, you're going to be restricted to succulents, you know, in that in that spot because cactus if, actually, yeah, <laughs> cactus, yeah. But I mean, you know, if you don't have water to it at all, um, it's going to be difficult through the summer months, and so you're going to have to pick something that either you you can pick succulents if you can at least water it every so Some, often somehow yeah if you can't water it all yeah like john's saying you're gonna have to actually stick with cactus that can survive those long periods of drought oh, i and if you do cactus i wouldn't do area? i wouldn't do any seeds though because you're gonna be trying to weed out this bed with a bunch of plants that you can't well, i think weed they're in. thinking of when the monsoons come it would be like wildflower time you know just the right. seeds would germinate and but i think it's up. just going to create a mess in the in the in the bed when you do that if you have if you have cactus in there also so you just want a uh, couple plant a couple cactus and white rock yep perfect <laughs> done <laughs> there you um, go solve but that I mean, but i mean if you plant succulents as long as you can water them once a week you're fine right and, and there she can do that there by are hand. carry water to it right yeah 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 and there are some plants that are really pretty bloomers like mm-hmm. um Mexican bird of paradise. Yep. Uh, it, I, mean, I don't know if it's hardy in that area, but yeah. and then also even like dwarf yeah. bougainvillea, right? Dwarf bougainvillea, Mexican bird of paradise. Yeah. Those are bigger. I mean, the dwarf bougainvillea not, but Mexican bird of paradise is bigger. Um, what I would really recommend is that you take a little drive around the neighborhood and mm-hmm. see what other people have put in that you like and yeah. that you would want over at your house, and, and just. Have a little checklist with you and go. Oh, I really like that. If yeah. you don't know what it is, take a picture take a of picture. it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Get the app, picture this, and it'll tell you <laughs> what it is. But it's gonna if, if she's gonna want something, she's gonna need to water at least once a week. You know, whether it's by a watering can or whether it's by a hose. But um, you 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 need to provide it with water because otherwise your options are very limited you know speaking of succulents and cactus the few that i have hanging that have little flowers after this rain they look beautiful mm-hmm. i'm so proud of them like look at you <laughs> little succulent how nice you look you know in these baskets that i haven't yeah. done anything to them in eight nine years yeah. the same ba- and, oh, i'm sorry I was the same baskets the birds left to make nests yeah yeah go ahead john sorry. tanya and carla say that they are not getting comments just refresh right that I think do so. It. Yeah, because yeah. we're we're getting comments here. Yeah, I, I would just refresh exactly. Yeah. Give that a shot. Some glitch. Was there another question, John? I, I think uh, Brian had mentioned someone else. Uh, we had some other comments, oh, like we were talking about from John? S- snails. Dave said that uh, David said that skunks eat snails. Yeah, they do. But and I don't I, think I want to bring in skunks yeah. just to get rid of the snails. <laughs> and I think possums do too. I, remember I haven't seen any possums. Can't you de order them, John? That's because Take Brian, out the scent glands? Brian killed them all. I don't know. Uh, John said that when he was growing up in Oregon that there were lots of geese. Oh, gosh. In the mint and spinach fields <laughs> to eat the snails. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, um, I don't want to get into it with No, I had a whole experience yeah. <laughs> with giant African geese. <laughs> yeah. And they either like you or they don't. Yeah, they'll they eat like, a lot of snails. Yeah, though. but they'll go after you, too. Yeah. If they don't like you, you can't run far enough. No. Uh, they're fast, They're and they fast. can fly. Yeah. I ended up losing mine to a bobcat. Really? Came in and left the heads, but ate the rest of them. It didn't want to get smarter. It yeah, was, I've, I've heard bobcat kind of heads don't taste very well. Not bobcat, bobcat heads. Goose it was head. geese. <laughs> bobcats <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's a was one of those quirky comedians was Bobcat Goldthwait. He was kind of still around. Is he? Yeah. Um, let's see. There was someone else. Oh. How about that? Carol sound? likes the suggestions. Yeah. She says uh Good. she thinks we're gonna have to water once a week. Yeah. Yeah. And water then once a week you can put in almost anything. Yeah. All kinds of you can do, you know, one of those really neat combination succulent gardens where you can have crassula, aeoniums, euphorbias and just all kinds of fun stuff growing in there. And then just there. let the rest that don't need the water be, yeah. right? Yeah. I I would I would very much caution on mixing in wildflowers into it though because 
I just feel those create a little bit of a mess later on when you're trying to clean out the wildflowers and then you have these plants in there. I like I like wildflowers just a, like on a long border like John, you know, we were talking about or or an area that they can be just allowed to run free. But in a raised bed container, um, it's kind of tough. Yeah. All of a sudden, my computer said, sorry, this live video cannot be viewed in your current browser. <laughs> In your current state of mind. Yeah, <laughs> just just shut it down. We're it's okay bad. here. Tiger, you're good. I'm good. Yeah, I I don't think I have any problems. What, do you, what browser are you on, John? He's using uh, Firefox. I'm trying to think of like an old one. That... How about Google Chrome? That might solve your problem. Yeah. I don't, I don't John, know if John, I have Chrome on this. John's still running on Ameri America Online, um, AOL. <laughs> AOL. Uh, was it NatGen? Net, was it? net. Yeah, Net something. something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Netscape. 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 Yeah. What was the common one that everybody stopped using because it was getting viruses? Was and it things? Yahoo? Netscape no, no, the Internet Explorer. Do oh, people oh. still use that? I don't. don't I don't know. Yeah. God, those days, right? You know, what's, days you know what's funny is that they. It's not that long ago. No. You know, it's funny to see things. And it wasn't that long ago that those things were all very, very popular. Somebody back in the late '90s said, "Yeah, just Google it." What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean Google it? What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. When I mean, it was in its infancy, infancy. It's like, what does that mean? And and how do you know when you're on the internet? I, I just talked like, what? What? Is, I don't. I, I'm on my computer. But what do you mean the internet? Ooh. Or as John called it, the World Wide Web. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, Al Gore invented that, right? Oh yep. yeah, yep. invented a lot of things in his day. <laughs> invented a lot of things. Um, we got about a minute before the next break. Give you a heads up. Oh, and when we come back, I want to find out what's blooming at Tiger's house. What's because yes. I'm thinking you, Tiger's house is going to experience a super bloom. I think yeah. I, because I think he you're doesn't right. really water as much as he should. Right. Your bottom area, you it's, don't water at all, do no. you? Nothing. And but you know what? And you should. You know what's super close to happening right now? I know somebody that could put in drip for you. <laughs> I think you should do that. But um, you know what's super close to happening right now is my dandelion tree is about to have flowers and seeds at the same time. I'm so excited because I've been waiting for this to be able to shoot a video and show pictures of it. To be able to show you guys, because it's one thing just to show the flower, right? But the but the but then to actually show the flowers and then the seeds, seeds. that look like a dandelion is really neat. Okay, then we're going to take a break. We've got two more segments coming up. Our next segment is uh, one of the longer ones, ten minutes, give or take. And then after that, a shorter break, and we say goodbye. But in the meantime, a lot more of Garden America on your Easter weekend. I, I so do stay to, with us. I wanted to write that down. I missed the last part. <laughs> we'll talk to you during the break about okay. that. John. You work on your browser. <laughs> Okay, we are back. John's been doing some browsing during yeah. the break and uh, reading your questions, your comments. So thank you very much for taking part on Facebook Live, being part of the show. So the paintbrush lily is coming up. I'm probably like a month away from that blooming. Um, a whole month? Uh, maybe new. Is it putting out the flower spike yet or no? Uh, no. no. It's just you know coming up right now. I have usually it that comes up before the leaves. Yeah, I have a... Um, I have a um, it, in a shadier area of the yard, uh, so I think it's a little behind the normal okay. schedule just because of that. Um, Peggy what, Martin's in bloom. Um, now, did it put on a lot of growth because of the rain? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peggy Martin. Yeah, Tiger put it in a bucket underwater. If you had a, um, <laughs> if you had a Kiff skate rose, would, it would you be, have somewhere to put it? I would, I would, yeah, a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm wondering if you could plant it like, just on the other side of the fence or that's something. It. Yeah, exactly. I just planted in the canyon. But it would need water. No. Like, that's the nice thing about my yard is that it, everything gets funneled downwards. Mm -hmm. So anything downhill is getting it's gonna water. It's going to get runoff. Oh. It is. And and not just runoff from, like, when – because that's the thing, right? When you irrigate your yard, you are underground having runoff happen. And it's usually at the low part of the yard where it just stays wet. And that happens at my yard pretty easily. So. Well, that's what I was wondering on the area at my house where mm -hmm. you're putting in the drip for the roses. Yep. I was wondering uh, if that drip is running 
horizontally on the hill, wouldn't that just keep the soil wet? Wouldn't it go downhill? Correct. It will go yeah. downhill. And um, where you behind your shed, right? Um, it's almost flat. Right. And so when I was talking about putting the drip in there, we put these check valves in because what would normally happen is when the system shuts off, hmm. everything would run to that area. Right. And that area would just get really wet. It would probably actually kill the plants because they would get overwatered. Oh. So it shuts because, it off? Well, yeah. So the check valves keep the water in certain other areas of the pipe. Because what happens when you shut off an irrigation system is all the water runs to the low point. A lot of people have a sprinkler that it just burbles a lot after you know their sprinkler shut off. And it's because all the water is going to the low point. Well, what we do is we put a check valve in those spots. So that way it prevents the water from burbling out because otherwise you get soppy mess, you get overwatering, um, and it creates problems. But we try to keep the water in the pipe so that way it doesn't create those problems. There's nothing worse than a burbling, soppy mess. No. <laughs> and I, I always, I've always said keep the water in the pipe. And there, <laughs> so that's what I live with. And there's a lot of water. People don't understand sometimes how much water, volume of water, is in their irrigation system. Right. So it could be a lot of water that gets emptied out when a system is shut down. I know we've mentioned this before, but if you're in the San Diego area and you have a landscaping job you need done, just call Tiger. <laughs> he doesn't have enough work. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got plenty of work, yeah. but he does such a great job. And um, one of the things that impressed me was uh, when my wife was telling, I'm letting my wife landscape around the house the way she wants. It's, you know, at her age, she should be happy, right? <laughs> so one of the things that the tiger uh, said that I, I guess I never really thought about was just tell him what you like. And if it doesn't work, he'll give you alternate suggestions to say, tell me what you want. And if it doesn't work there, I'll say you could have this, this or this. Yeah, right. And it's very similar to what you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, you know, because there's options with plants, right? I mean, we talked about the plumbago, and there's that one might not work, but there are plumbagos out there that are different, and we can find an option sometimes for it. Millie says, what about putting some cystus on the hill? That's an option, too. She said, Color. Uh, she said the variety sunset is uh, mm -hmm. blooms a lot. Yeah. A lot. I know that the regular, is it purpurea? Mm hmm. Uh, is yep. spectacular, but just in the spring. You yeah. know what else I just thought of that I would really like? Um, it can't be up front, though, because they get a little tall and rangy, but I've always wanted, um, what's the fried egg plant? Oh, Matilha poppy. Yeah, Matilha poppies, uh, Romnia. Yeah. Yep. I think maybe off to a side. I think that would be so cool to incorporate right along the edge of your tree pit, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a long ways. No, up. no, no. But I'm saying you, you could have some those up. kinds of things. Yeah, you can have they? some up in the yard. Yeah, you know for sure. But that's also one of those plants that's wonderful just to put in a landscape. And then all of a sudden you look down and you you see this giant white flower in bloom, and they look so cool. Yeah, that's one of the things, Brian, that will only germinate after a fire. Yeah, mm. and in the old days. Like uh, when you and I were kids, the way the nurserymen would start those is they would, uh, they'd have a flat, they'd plant the seeds, and then they would build a fire over it, over it. to germinate the seeds. Now they, I think they use smoke, right? So what I the heat, so. the heat, help yeah. helps germinate them, right, at a certain temperature? Yeah, I don't think it's the heat. I think it's the smoke from oh, the heat. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because now you, there's a lot of uh, South African plants are that way too, and they sell smoke in a package and yeah. you can just <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like like a can of dehydrated you can only order it on the dark web, <laughs> on the, dark web. Yeah. <laughs> or the back of a comic book it's <laughs> like a can of dehydrated water <laughs> Here's all smoke. you do is add water uh, but the um uh yeah you can mix your seeds with this uh, almost like ashes yeah and, I was going to say, it's kind of like ash. It's kind of yeah. like ash, yeah. Right. I don't know. It might even be just the ash particles is what makes it. But, um, you know, Matilla hot poppies is also one of those plants that sometimes when people try to transplant them too late in the spring or mm -hmm. sometimes people will try to do it in the summer, 
it'll 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 look like it's dead. And I tell people, no, 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 leave it. Right. It'll come really back. fall is the best time, right? It is late right. fall. That is you. You can't go wrong with planting a matilda hot pot. But nobody fall. wants them like, uh, <laughs> until they're blooming, yeah. which is in, in, the, be in, in the, the worst time to yeah. plant them. But I tell people, plant it. That's fine. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. Leave it because that plant will also just come back from its root system. Sometimes it'll completely die, and then the next season you'll see it just come back, and it'll come back amazingly wow. beautiful. Wow. And they grow so fast. They turn into full-size bushes in one year. So we're talking a bush that's probably four or five feet tall by four or five feet wide. It can come back from the roots in right. one season to that size. So people go, oh, I don't want to cut it back because I want it to be big. It's like, no, no, no. If you cut it back, it's still going to be this size right. um, in no time. Um, if you don't cut it back, it's going to take over the whole area. Shannon likes Echium also. But those are pretty big, so you really need a... There's some cool varieties of those, too. Are there? Yeah. Smaller ones? Smaller ones. Really? And also there's the the pink ones, and so they have some really neat... I know there's echiums. some uh, annual echium, too, yeah. right? Yeah, and biannual ones. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they have some small echiums, too, that are kind of fun to use in smaller areas of the yard. You You could actually plant them kind of around the house, too, and their foliage stays better than... The, the big variety. Because the big variety, the foliage turns, in the summer months, it turns not right. so good looking. This, yeah. is, this is the time of year where they're spectacular yeah, and they're, everybody wants them and then they plant them and go, yeah, yeah exactly. what's wrong with it? Yeah. Hey, uh, Tanya in San Jose says that she needs a check valve for her sprinklers. And she said, yeah. is that what it's called? She hasn't seen them up yes. there. A matter, a matter of fact, Tanya, is it the pop-up sprinkler that you're having a problem with? leaking or is it the drip because now in california they can only sell pop-up sprinklers with check valves in it oh. it's, it's illegal to currently sell sprinkler pop-up but um without, without check a valve. check valve um if but it's drip a, you can still do right yeah drip you have to buy a check valve for your drip system so it just depends on um whether you're using a netafim or some kind of brown drip uh tube or if you're using black tubing they sell different ones based on whether it's the black tube or the brown one and um uh where is she at does she say Tanya? yes she's in san jose. san jose san jose yeah i mean if you go to any irrigation supply store they're going to be able to have that for you and um be able to point you in the right direction i wouldn't go to a lowe's or depot they're not gonna there you 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 could probably go there and find the part but they're not going to help you um figure out what the right one is very well Veronica says that uh, her Facebook comments aren't showing up well, so she just did a refresh, and she said the new ones are now purple. So cool. she said it's perfect for Easter. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Purple um, pros. There was a rose that somebody gave me a cutting up pros. one time called purple pros. I think. Pros is termed for um, like a pro, like um. It's or a, like when you a, read like a, prose. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, a prose right. is a poem or something, yeah. isn't it? But purple prose is um look up the definition before I, I blow it. But do you know what okay. do you know what a pro is, Brian? Is it is it a poem? Yeah, it's like it's like reading. No, prose, prose it it's prose is right? just regular writing. Just regular writing? Right. Like if you, you read an essay, that's prose. That's a prose? Yeah. Okay. As opposed to what we are on the radio. Yeah, is definitely, definitely, right. definitely not. Okay, it is break time. Yeah. We have one more segment coming up, so still time for your questions, your comments on Facebook Live. Thank you to those listening to this pre-recorded show on BizTalk Radio. Back after these messages. Yes, indeed. We are back for our final segment on this Easter weekend. We do thank you for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, this pre-recorded show. And again, we are off next week as uh, John's going to take some time off to go to the auction and read some prose, Tiger. <laughs> Very purple prose, Purple too. prose, yes. Yeah, yeah. Purple okay. prose, by the way, is um, 
it, it's we le- used the term during the break gilding the lily it's like just too much you know it's Stop filled gilding with the lily will you give me a filled break. with cliche, cliches it's melodramatic too pro uh poetic yeah. um it's just overdoing it something <laughs> like you might think of reading in a romance old Vic- novel. yeah an old victorian <laughs> romance novel oh it was so funny when when um when uh, you know that Twilight series of books came out, it was like the vampires or whatever, and I was reading them. Just my wife's an English teacher, and so we just read some things that are just in the news at the moment. And I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" They just run on and on. Well, those were young, y- yeah, y- young yeah. adult books yeah. too, right? So young exactly. Adult books. And I was just like, "Get to the point," <laughs> you know. So there, there was right, a lot right. of verbal prose in that writing. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jan says that mallow feeds hummingbirds in the winter. You know, I noticed a lot of hummingbirds on the anisodontia that yeah. you gave me and bees during the winter. Well, our bees are back do you know, big time. Do you know that marshmallows came from mallow? Yeah. I I, I, I kind of thought that. But but, I, but then you but think, it, no, that's too easy. Well, but no, but I, exactly. And I know mallows, and obviously not the mallow that we know. Right. But, um... It was it was just interesting that when I learned that 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 yeah that marshmallow wasn't there came a from candy mallow. bar mallow bar mallow I think there was a and it was a big it was chocolate marshmallow yeah probably. It was called, I think it was called a mallow bar just a mallow those on Facebook let us know yeah but yeah I I was interesting because um, I was reading a news article and they were talking about something involving marshmallows and how they came from the mallow plant and right you know, I was like oh oh interesting. But now they're just sugary, fake. <laughs> I don't think there's any mallow in them anymore. <laughs> well, root beer was originally called sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla, old west, right, John? And yeah. it came from the that flavoring comes from the roots of uh, sassafras, sassafras trees. Yeah, sassafras trees, Brian. Uh, you like because they have three different type leaves on the same plant. Oh, I love leaves. You know that. Yeah, they have. They have entire leaves, you know, kind of like this, and then they have right hand and left hand leaves. Interesting. John's looking at himself, holding up his hands on his monitor. <laughs> and the delay. And the delay. Yeah. yeah. The delay. Exactly. Uh, I was having fun. It's did, like did 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 sarsaparilla have alcohol in it no. in the beginning? It's no. always been non-alcoholic. Right. Yeah. Okay. They used to. I remember they used to. But Coca-Cola did have cocaine. <laughs> yeah, up until. <laughs> The 1920s, I think. Yeah. And they, in fact, they recommended that in heroin, doctors would for like whatever ails you. Yeah. Well, you need some coke, well, I mean, maybe a little her- heroin, heroin with that. Makes you feel great, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, in Victorian times and maybe maybe like Civil War times, they used opium a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, men would often have doctors prescribe it to their wives to calm them down right. and to mellow them out. It was called uh, Laudaman back then. Calm them down. So it was like a win-win. Everybody was happy. Everybody was happy. <laughs> nice. Um, then it's it's it's. Neat. Do you have any trees blooming at your house, by the way? Trees. Yeah. So my my out in front, I have a flowering pear, and it's blooming, and. What are the trees blooming? Here? I noticed some of the flowering pears uh, in coastal areas were in full bloom right now. Yeah. But the ones inland were all bloomed out. Yeah. Like in Fallbrook. Um, nothing else is tree-wise in bloom right now. No. Do you still have the – I grew some trees from seed, African trees. Yep. Do you have those in pots or in the ground? No, it's still in a pot. Still in a pot still and still pot. alive. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's even impressive. Though you, even though you only put perlite and right. sand and in uh, your potting mix, I have to water them every day. Even in the like, he, even John after loves drainage, even after it rains, I have to water them. You know, I didn't. I don't think I showed you when you were over, but um, down by Jesse's house, there's a red bud in full bloom. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lenore mentioned online that uh, they were blooming. She's out in Canyon Country, so a little bit warmer. Yeah. But the 
um, western redbuds are really hardy, and they uh, they make a great show. But the eastern redbuds, I think a lot depends on the time of the year. And the one that Jesse has is the eastern redbud because it's the, uh, what's the red one called? Um, purple red, pansy? Yeah, purple pansy. So, uh, but anyway, because of the cool weather we've had and the, and the amount of rain, that one's spectacular right now. Your it's, magic dogwood was in full bloom, too. It was coming in a bloom. It was all budded, but the the uh, when it's in full bloom, all the blooms are pure white. Oh, okay. They were still kind of a creamy, yes. uh, little bit of green. Yeah, it's cool. Can we go back to roses for a second? Sure. Because it's a bad segue. I have a uh, rose. Uh, we got a minute to go, by the way. Go with ahead. a bud on it that I got from you. I got the, ni- Nimbus. Nimbus. Yeah. Good. Good. Is there a rose called Mrs. Robinson? Yes, uh, our buddy Cliff Warrant actually was the breeder for that. Okay, and so it's an older, not too old. No, <laughs> no, no. The rose. <laughs> and no, Tiger thought I was going to say because it's so Cliff, seductive, right? Cliff's Mrs. about our age. <laughs> wow, wow. No, I think it's maybe ten years, okay, fifteen that was, that was years my, at the that, most. That was my question. It's a pretty rose. I think it's you a have a single. happy birthday, will you? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna cheer up. I think you got into the happy juice before you is, came came into is the there studio. A rose, Mrs. Robinson, is she old but not too old? Well, that's interesting. You say that because the movie, right? Right. With Dustin Hoffman and Anne Bancroft, right? She was an older woman seducing him. Who she was, was in a his, cougar? Yeah, a cougar. He was in his twenties. Right. And the famous scene. You're, you're trying to seduce me, aren't you, Mrs. Robinson? And that's why you named that rose, because the rose itself is so seductive. Well, he named it Mrs. Robinson because that, I'm overthinking that it. was his neighbor in Palm Springs, and she was the one who got him interested in roses. Oh. Because she needed some help. He spin. went over and helped her and eventually had the largest rose garden in yeah. Southern California. Hey, that's going to do it for our special Easter edition. Thank you, one and all. Those on Biz Talk Radio, those, of course, on Facebook Live. A good show today. Uh, Thanks to you. The questions, the comments on Facebook. Remember, this show will be uploaded this afternoon on our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. Please go to our website. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. GardenAmerica.com. It truly helps us. Have a great rest of your Easter weekend. We'll do it again in two weeks. We're off next week. Have a safe two weeks. Again, two weeks. We're back here in studio on Garden America. Take care.